So the observer, and I'm just going to use my standard intro, unless I can use something else, no I won't. I'll use the mug. Okay, so this, how to do the observer, how to do this tool. This is a mug, okay. Uh, this is an object. When, when there's an object, it has a, it has a shape. And we can all see the shape of the mug. Is anybody the mug? You're on camera. No, nobody's the mug. That's good in this room. So when there is observing, and the, the mug is quite a meaningless object, so there seems to be detached observation of the object. Is that right? It's like no one's confused they might be the mug, or like a confused that there could be a mug sometimes or, or not. So it's obvious that there's a detached observing and the, this object is not me. Yeah. Okay. So next thing is thoughts. Oh, okay, sorry, another thing. Like if I move this mug from here to here, are you a mug? Even if it's moving? No. The observer is not affected even if the, mo the mug moves along. If I hide the mug, is anybody the mug? No. So even if the mugs are not here, or if it's here, or if it's passing along, it's still, you're not the mug, you're the observer of the mug. Yeah? Okay. So thoughts. So thoughts. You know, thoughts sometimes come and go. Sometimes there's lots of thoughts, sometimes there's no thoughts. Sometimes there's presence and no thoughts. So, is, any, is anyone here a thought? So is it clear, this is a spiritual experience, that there is observing of thoughts? You know, the observer of, a th observer of thoughts is not thoughts. Is that clear? And this is important. Because, you know, the only time you can become your thoughts is if you identify with them and you get interested in them and then, you, and then your experience becomes, I am a thought. If you over-identify with the mug and it, and it becomes extremely interesting and you become a mug addict, then you can start to get confused. No, I am the mug. You can have an argument. I am the mug. But when it's detached, there's a clear, observed, detached observation that the observer is not a mug. That's very, very clear. And, that must, and when that's clear with your thoughts, that there is observing of thoughts, thoughts are not what I am. Yeah. OK, good. So now that you have the space, you don't, have, don't get hooked in, back into your thoughts. Or if you get hooked, unhook, be back in the observing. And then you, they, all thoughts lose their power. The only time a thought, if, if you make a, a thought special, then you get enmeshed with it and then you lose the observing feel. So none of your thoughts are interesting, they're all meaningless. Be, the, be in the observing of thoughts, you're not your thoughts. Okay, the next thing is images. Like if I remember a picture of when I was three years old, am I this picture? No. Is the observer of a picture a picture? No. I'm not a picture. I'm not an image. Images come and go, just like thoughts. But the observer of them is not an image. The observer of a thought is not a thought. So that, you know, what am I? Can I be a limited object that passes before me? So thoughts pass, images pass, <laughs> That's okay. What about feelings that come and go? If suddenly, like, suddenly, like, ooh, a feeling of fear arises. Am I that fear? No, that's clear. Feelings come and go, but there is an observer. Oh, look, there's no fear. Now there's something observes fear is here, and something observes fear is gone. But the, that which observed it come and go is not the fear. If you become enmeshed, if you hook into the fear, it suddenly can be experienced, I am fear. Or if there's a thought and you hook into the thought, I am this thought. But actually, you're the observer of this. Okay. Time. Okay. Something tracks time, it's like counting seconds. It's trying to be interested in time. But if you, if, is there an observer of time? And does time exist in the observer? No. No time. See, if you let go of your interest, then that which observes time is timeless. That which observes thoughts is thoughtless. That which observes feelings is free of the feelings that come and go. Location. You know. Oh, the bo another interesting one, the body. Like, uh, the body 
has, you know, like the body, like a mug, has a shape. One's aware of the shape of the body, the limits of the body. But is there observing of the body? Is one aware of the observing of the body? So if, it, if not, be aware of the shape and then be aware of that which is observing the shape. And is the observer of the shape a shape? No, it's not. So it's there, that which observes the body is not a body. That which observes thoughts come and go is not a thought. That which observes time is not of time. What of location? You know, something knows here or there or there, but that which observes all locations, does it have a location? No. Okay. So this might, these are experiential questions, they're not like intellectual questions, because that would be me asking you to think, but hopefully we've got past the thinking bit. So now, so we've done all of those things, so now there's an experience. Something is observing time, which is not, which is not time, thought, which is not thoughts, D uh, location, which is not location. Now the experience, now you check in with your spiritual experience. Is my experience, does it have any limits? Is the experience that I'm experiencing now, just either, either if it's got, just say, if it's got a limit, say yes, it's, I feel limited. If it's not got a limit, just shake your hand now. Are you experiencing limits? Limit? Yeah. Okay, okay, so this is where I'll put the camera off and we'll deal with the bits. <laughs>